I was watching something fascinating on YouTube the other day. It was a debate between a theologian, William Lane Craig, and a physicist, Sean Carroll. And in this debate, they brought up something called a Boltzmann brain. So I started Googling this and studying what was up with this Boltzmann brain. And I found the topic to be fascinating. So first, let me try to explain in layman's terms what the Boltzmann brain is and the argument for why you statistically right now are not what you think you are, but you're more likely to be a Boltzmann brain. But I'm going to take that hypothesis to an even higher level. And, okay, well, first, let's explain in layman's terms what is a Boltzmann brain. So we are all collections of atoms put in a certain order. And hypothetically, if you were to take another collection of atoms and you were to put them in the exact same order that you are in, that collection of atoms would have your very same everything, your same thoughts, views on everything. It would be a perfect copy of you. So your thoughts, there are two ways that science knows of to create your thoughts. The, the one way is the way that they've told you about, you know, there was a big bang, then planets formed, and then uh, chemical reactions took place, and then you evolved into a human being after a long chain of events. It is easier, though, for the universe... Because E equals MC square and the universe is infinite and given an infinite amount of time, it's more logical that atoms in the universe are going to naturally and repetitively arrange themselves in such a way where the thoughts that you're having right now are just randomly generated by particles in the universe bumping into each other. Now, this argument is very damning to physics because it's supported by the math and it's fundamentally flawless based on science that we understand. So if you don't know who Sean Carroll is, he's a brilliant human being. He's not just brilliant. He speaks. He's very captivating. He presents well-thought-out arguments. And for a long time, I saw him as, like, academically flawless. Until I saw his flimsy argument for what a... The whole Boltzmann brain thing, how he argued against that. So his rationale for why a Boltzmann brain cannot be a thing is that, well, in order for it to be a thing, that would mean all the physics and everything that he learned was false. But I say my counter argument to that is why does it have to be false? Why can't they both be coincidentally correct? I mean, sure, there's going to be Boltzmann brains out there with false knowledge that form. But statistically, in an infinite universe, there's also going to be Boltzmann brains out there where knowledge for knowledge and fact for fact, everything lines up perfectly. So why doesn't Sean Carroll admit this? And why doesn't he admit that even still, we are still more likely, statistically speaking, to be Boltzmann brains? Because he's terrified of admitting the fact that, statistically speaking, his entire life could be a sham.
I don't think it is. Again, I am literally one of Sean Carroll's biggest fans. But my entire life could be a sham. I don't know. But honestly speaking, this is just a small reason why I find the Boltzmann brain hypothesis to be so fascinating. I find this as a potential for explaining God. Albert Einstein, he believed in the God of Spinoza, which basically was a God that created law and order, like of physics and whatnot. But he didn't get intimately involved in his creations. Now, if this Boltzmann brain thing is a thing, why can't a creature form via the same process that has the ability to be godlike, that, that would appear to us to be a god, that can create human beings? So God would be a natural phenomenon. But let's not get carried away. There's still questions we have to ask. Like Number one, hypothetically speaking, say that's the case. We would still need to demonstrate that organic matter can have influence at a distance via thought. I mean, we already know influence at a distance is a thing. But is it a thing with no type of connection? But maybe even then I'm looking at that wrong. Like maybe even then that's not even a prerequisite. Maybe a conscious creature, for lack of a better term, or, or a conscious God can arise from this type of processing, realize that if it has these powers and what has taken place, then cease the, the process that makes it go back to being random particles, then create life and function as a god. There's a lot of possibilities here, but I'm making this podcast in the hopes that it gets to Sean Carroll because I'd like to have him on as a guest, and I'd like to interrogate him very thoroughly on this matter. I need him to prove to me and to the science community that he's not afraid of this.